Hey, welcome back to some natural deductive logic. Today we're going to be taking a look at symbolizing sentences in our new language. So we're going to do a ton of examples. That's all we're doing this video is looking at how we can change sentences into logical form. Now this is something that you will probably only be tested on uh, for conversion. So when you do proofs, you're not going to be asked to convert things to logical form and then prove it. That's very unlikely. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into an easy sentence and then we're going to build up. So we have a sentence, John likes cake. So what we can do is we're going to make this whole sentence one atom. So we're going to make this C and we're going to say that C is equal to John likes cake. And this is how we're going to formalize our sentence. So now when we come back to the second sentence, and I should mention that C is the correct formalization of John Lex's cake. You can pick any letter you want. It doesn't matter. But it's just one variable because there are no connectives in there. So here we have John does not like cake. Now, we see this word not, and we know that there's a C because it's pretty much the same sentence, but it is the opposite of C. It is saying not C. It is not the case that John likes cake. So you can take C as John likes cake, and just see what you can put in front of it to give it the same meaning. So not C is really not John likes cake, which is the same thing as saying John does not like cake. So here we have John likes cake and Mary likes dogs. So we have C for John likes cake, but we don't have a formalization of Mary likes dogs yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little bank of things over to the side of our formulations. So this is C and we're going to have uh, D is equal to Mary likes dogs. So now we have C and we also have D. We know both of these are true and we have this word and here. So what connective puts these two together? And we have our little carrot here for C and D. So this means John likes cake and Mary likes dogs. As a little uh, tip for naming your things, you can either pick the first letter of the subject or the object in the sentence. It doesn't matter. I have John here twice, so picking J would be kind of counterproductive. So I picked uh, C and D to stand for cake and dogs. Uh, in the third, fourth sentence here, we have John likes cake or John likes pizza. Well, we have cake, which is C. We don't have anything for pizza yet, so let's call it P. And P is just going to be John likes pizza. And I'm going to fix that J. Okay, so John likes cake, John likes pizza. We wrote them both down, and our connective here is or, so we're going to put a V there. And... Hopefully you do remember all these connectives. I will write them down. So those are our connectives for not, or. For some reason, when I deal with text boxes, it's uh, not very friendly to me. We have if then, and then we have if. So here's our sentence. If John likes cake, then John likes pizza. Well. This is our if-then sentence, if cake, then pizza. So here's some really simple sentences. This is just sort of the introduction. So here we're gonna get a little bit harder on our next page here. Um, we can symbolize these and you should symbolize them, but I'm gonna make them pretty obvious what they are. So it is raining and I am carrying an umbrella. So it is raining, let's call this R, and I am carrying an umbrella, let's call that U for umbrella, and it's joined by, conjunct by conjunction, so we have and. So R and U. What about it is not the case that it is raining? Well, it is not the case is the same thing as saying not. So it's not R, but I am carrying an umbrella. So here's the word but, and we don't really know what this means. So you have to use your skills in English to figure out what this could possibly mean. Is this equivalent to saying it is not the case that it is raining or I am carrying an umbrella? And 
That doesn't quite make sense. It's like, well, you know, it kind of implies that it is not raining and I'm carrying an umbrella. Because but really just means and. So this is the same thing as saying not are and you. But is similar to and. In semantics, and not propositional logic semantics, but regular semantics of linguistics, uh, but carries a sort of comparison with it. So when you say but, it kind of says, well, the first part's not true, and I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. So, but really is the same thing in and in logic. There is no difference. Um, I will go outside unless it is raining. So here we have, I will go outside, which I'll call it O, and it is raining, which are. And we have this word unless here. And there's two ways of looking at this. Uh, I'm going to give you... This is something I can't explain intuitively. This is one of those things you just have to kind of remember, because even after doing this all this time, I know there's a logical equivalence between these two definitions, but they still don't make 100% sense to me. So we call this O or R. Unless is the same as O. Or what we can do is, with the word unless, we can treat it as not R. So... I will go outside unless it is raining. It's the same thing as saying, if it is not raining, then I will go outside. So you can either say O, V, R, or not R, arrow, O. Either of these are fine. So unless, so I'm going to write this P unless Q is equivalent to P or Q or not Q, arrow, P. Either one of these is fine. Again, this is one of those things that you're probably going to see on your midterm just because it is a pain to remember what it means. Okay, here we have Maggie or Ronald will win the race. Uh, so here is what might confuse you because you just have the word here, Maggie, and then you have a conjunction, or a disjunction, sorry, or. Uh, what this really means is you have to kind of paraphrase it. So what this really means is Maggie will win the race or Ronald will win the race. So... We can say M for Maggie or R for Ronald. So Maggie will win the race or Ronald will win the race. You just have to figure out what it means. So this isn't always straightforward. That's why translating and then solving proofs is a little bit iffy because if you make a mistake in the translation problem, uh, you're not going to be able to solve the actual proof. So... Let's do our final sentence on this slide. You will get an A in this course if and only if you study diligently. So, A for you will get an A in this course, and you study diligently will write as a capital S. And what is our symbol for if and only if? This is the biconditional. So, A biconditional S. For this page, um, there's something that always confused me, and you have this word if, and then you have this other conditional that says if and only if, and there's this weird thing in the middle, only if, that's hardly ever talked about, and I want to talk about it. So, here's the thing. John likes Mary if Mary, Mary plays video games. So, we can rewrite this as saying, if Mary plays video games, then John likes Mary. So we're going to write this as um, M for Mary plays video games. And we're going to write J for J likes Mary. So John likes Mary if Mary plays video games, so we write this as if M, then J. So you have to sort of paraphrase it and put the if first and the then afterwards. Then isn't always explicitly written, so you need to figure out where that is. Now we have a sentence, John likes Mary only if Mary plays video games. And this is confusing because we see this if here, and we say, hey, this must be the same thing, but it is not the same thing because we have only if, and this is symbolized as J arrow M for 
if John likes Mary, then Mary plays video games. And this is a little bit not intuitive, but only if would mean that if Mary does not play video games, then John does not like Mary. So we haven't seen the semantics yet, but I will introduce this again later. But if John likes Mary and Mary does not play video games, then this sentence would be false. So we can't symbolize it as if M then J, because then the sentence would still be true. So it might be a little bit confusing, and John likes Mary if and only if Mary plays video games. What this really is, is we take the two sentences and we join them together, because we have if, and we have only if, and we can join them. So this is actually the same thing as M by conditional J. Of course, we we convert this because this is cleaner and we know exactly what it means. But you can think of if and only if as the same thing. So if you see only if and you're thinking, hey, which one is it? Uh, just remember, you know the if direction and you know that the two of them together make up the by conditional. Therefore, only if should be the other direction. It should be something called the converse. So there is symbolizing uh, some very basic sentences, and now we're going to do some more symbolization into proof form. So we have premises and conclusions, so we're going to symbolize them into premises and conclusions. So Mary owns a barbecue, or she owns an oven. Well, let's write this as B for barbecue, and we have or she owns an oven. And I should say Try this on your own first, and then come back and see if you uh, if you get it right. And then for our second sentence, we have Mary does not own an oven. So we have not O. Therefore, Mary owns a barbecue, which is B. And this is the correct symbolization of this sentence. Again, you can use any letters you want. Just make sure the letters are consistent in the same places. Uh, this is a proof. I'm not going to show you why this is a proof, but... This is a proof that the ones I'm giving you are valid for these two examples. So, John is a professor and a loving father. So, let's have um, J for John as a professor and L for loving... Actually, let's use F for loving father. So, John is a professor and a loving father. Mary is a professor. Okay, so let's have an M there for Mary. Um, if John or Mary is a professor then my child will be smart. So we have a then here, and my child will be smart, we'll put that in S. And we have something interesting, because as the antecedent, we have the sentence, if John or Mary is professor, which says, if John is a professor, or Mary is a professor, then my child will be smart. Therefore, my child is smart. And we'll write that as S. So, this is one of the trickier ones for symbolizations because we have two things in an antecedent and one thing in a conclusion. Again, you just need to look for your ifs and thens, and if those are on the outside, then those have the biggest scope. And if John or Mary, you see John and Mary are being connected by or, therefore they're going to be together. So you can sort of check these things out, like if this was if John is a professor, then my child will be smart, or Mary is a professor, then these can have different uh, symbolizations. So you need to see what is being connected by what, what the scope is. And this also introduces a concept of the main connective. So a main connective is something that connects everything. So... I will do one more thing here. So if we have a sentence like J and K or P arrow uh, K or F and this whole thing is negated, then we take a look at the outermost connective. And by outermost, I don't mean what's on the left or the right. I mean what is affecting everything inside the brackets. We go from the outer brackets to the inner brackets. So right here, this is the main connective because it affects this whole thing right here. So now if we go one step in, let's rewrite this as J and K 
or P, arrow, K or F. So we've just taken away one set of brackets. And what is the main connective in this? Well, this is the antecedent. This is the consequent. So we have our main connective here. And if you take a look at the inner sides here, we have this as a connective going inwards. Uh, this connects J and K and P together, and this would connect J and K together. So the scope is always determined by the brackets. So if you just keep going from bracket to bracket and find out what is encompassing all of the brackets, you will eventually find the main connective. Uh, so when we get back, next video, we're going to do some truth tables because this is basic syntax. And we're going to do some truth tables, and then we'll start getting into proofs, and it's going to be some fun times.